think we need to reframe some of the discussion around a couple of these rankings. It's pretty easy for me to see that a lot of people doing the rankings had probably not heard some of the deep cuts on showbiz enough to rate them, or had not really given them a fair shot. When I look at the rankings, at the top, a lot of them seem to really make sense from things I've heard from the community. Another thing to keep in mind is that nearly all of these songs are 9s and 10s to most of us, so parsing between these is a lot harder than it should be, or would be, on other lists from like other bands. All that said, this song is easily a top song of showbiz again for me, so I'm pretty surprised to see it here in some ways, but we've seen the trend in the ranking. I think Showbiz got a little bit ripped off, even though it's not my favorite of the bunch. I actually truly wish Muse did way more instrumentals. As much as I love Matt's voice, I love their instrumentation just as much, and this is a perfect way that they can just let their instrumental chops show. The song kind of oscillates from this beautiful, groovy, and catchy sound to lively and raw, and the transitions are flawless. Hey look, another instrumental. I do prefer Minimum here, but the bass line, again, is undeniable. And this one focuses much more on building an atmosphere. <laughs> Although I'm not a huge fan of this song, I certainly understand the appeal. It has one of the more nostalgic sounds to it, out of the older Muse songs. And the song is layered with a lot of complex songwriting techniques, complete with shifting tones and rhythms throughout. The chorus is undeniably lovely as well. Twin is another song I wasn't actually aware of until more recently. This is one of the more unique songs I've ever heard in my entire life. For a song that uses such traditional instrumentation, it really pushed the envelope. I love the rapid snare rolls and the bent guitar and bass notes to follow the strange cadence that that brings. I can't say that I find the chorus flawless, which is why I see this as a whopper placement, but I can't help but just go back to hear the tastiness of that verse regularly. Too late, I already found what I was <laughs> oh, another fallen showbiz warrior. Is there much more to say? This song showcases Matt's early vocal control splendidly and is well loved by most for good reason. It's one of those songs that's really fun to show people too because of how dramatic it is. This is one of the songs I always get flamed for loving. I genuinely am a fan of many genres, and this song does the pop, EDM, rock crossover beautifully, in my opinion. The details of Matt's unborn child's heartbeat starting off the song sealed the deal, but the flawless instrumentation and passionate vocals and lyrics built the foundation. I encourage everyone to listen to the instrumental version of this song found on YouTube. The production behind the synths is ear candy, and I still find myself regularly returning to this instrumental. I totally understand this song isn't for everyone, because a lot of you that got into Muse got into them for the raw, heavy rock stuff. So I do understand why the placement might be proper for all of you. For me, however, this would remain a perfect 10 for now. This is another Muse song that I just really can't connect with. There are obviously strong ideas floating around here. I like the bass piano notes to emphasize chord changes and the rapid cadences of the verses, but something about the way everything pieces together in most of these early B-sides just doesn't fit with me as well as some of the album tracks, which it seems like they took a lot more time refining. I think people kind of like glorify these really deep cuts because they haven't heard them as much. And if they were actually super prominent and placed on an album and you had heard them in rotation, heard them live, hundred times, you probably wouldn't feel the same way. I'm not saying that any of these songs are not great. I still think that they are very good, but I think that's why they ended up getting these like cult followings. I have kind of a love-hate relationship with this one. While the groove is infectious, the singing is passionate and energized. There is something quite a bit cheesy about the whole ordeal. I suppose the chorus part is actually perfect, with distorted bass and massive drum hits and soaring vocals and the staggered sequence of the guitar line is quite catchy in the verses as well, but I just can't find myself loving this one. Maybe one day. Everyone else around me seems to find it flawless. <laughs> oh, 
While there are certainly cool ideas going on in this cover, such as Dom's frantic yet controlled drumming, I have to say that I probably still prefer the original, which is the only reason this isn't rated much higher, and I feel it's probably the same for you guys as well. If this had been an original, this may find itself in the 8 to 10 range, but you guys seem to feel similarly. I just really can't connect with this one in any way except for the chorus. Otherwise it seems quite forgettable for me unfortunately. What? Why guys? Why rate this here? I thought it was a fan favorite! I demand recourse. This may just be the craziest slash heaviest track in their entire discography, especially in the studio versions. Of course, it's not as refined as its brother Dead Star, but the raw energy here is palpable and instantly deserving of a top spot in my book. The switch into double time in the second verse kicks what felt like max intensity up another notch, and it feels like the song never relents until the end of its runtime. And live, it's even more fun. I will say the song seems to have a curve until learning to love it, where I didn't actually love it on my first listens, but the more I found myself getting into metal, the more I found myself really appreciating the unpolished product. And Matt screams! For some reason, I always thought of James Bond when I heard this one, along with Supremacy, of course. The bass in this song is the main reason it's so strong, and that final riff may just be my favorite Muse riff of all time. It feels like the end of the world is coming and Muse is encouraging it. Chris is still the real MVP here though. It's been a while since we've seen Drone's song on here. I think Aftermath is quite overlooked and I understand why. It does fall short of some top tier Muse tracks. I think the music video helped me to appreciate this one more than I already did though. It's not a perfect song by any means, but it has so many parts that I find stunning from the early monk singing to the infectious guitar lead and solo and the lyrics. I understand why people don't love it though. This song is like Matt threw a bunch of random piano ideas at the wall, but nearly everyone sounds like a classical music legend at the peak of their game. I love every moment of the runtime and Matt sounds like a virtuoso on the piano. I simply wish we had more material like this. It seems like a precursor to the Exogenesis Symphony, and, well, for that alone, it deserves endless credit. <laughs> 